I have made a simple program where I take two numbers as input and print their sum as output. Let's play around with this code and learn more about storage classes. The first storage class we discussed was auto. So the variables I have declared and defined num1, num2 and sum all of them are having storage class auto. So even if I write auto here, it's not going to make any difference. The variables still remain automatic. Let's build it. Here I see a warning. Auto changes meaning in C++11. Please remove it. You might have realized it yourselves that auto is a bit redundant. When you can actually make your code behave, the same way without writing this keyword you obviously would not like to type that word. So in the newer versions of C++ starting from C++ 11 the auto keyword was removed. In fact it was not removed but it conveys a different meaning now. Uh, go to your settings and then compiler. In the compiler settings Choose have G++ follow the C++11 ISO C++ language standard and then click on OK. This makes your compiler switch to C++11 standard. Now if I add the keyword auto and then build it, this would show me error. Two or more data types in declaration of number. Auto itself is not a storage class but a data type starting from C++11 and this data type would decide the type of the variable depending upon the initial value. So you need to initialize your variable in the same line where you declare it. So I can write auto x equals to 5 and I can print x along with with a space in between them. Let's build it and it builds successfully. Now if I run it, I need to provide input. So I write 5 and 6 and it shows me 5 plus 6 that is 11 and my x which is 5. I can change the value of x from 5 to some string value. Say hello and this would be printed correctly. So I write 1 and 2 and it shows me 3 hello. That is about auto. The next we discussed was static storage class. Static can also be used similarly like auto. You can use register keyword here. And although it is not guaranteeing that num1 and num2 would be stored in the CPU registers, there is a possibility. If the CPU registers would be free during the execution of the program, these uh, during the compilation of the program, these variables would be stored in the registers. Now since your registers don't have a memory location associated with it, you cannot access you cannot access the address of your variables which have storage class register. We can actually go to the low level like addresses of variables in C++ since C++ is a middle level programming language and we will see how to do that when we discuss about pointers but uh, since we are talking about registers you just need to know that since you are storing it in registers, it does not have a memory location, a memory address associated with it. And hence you cannot use pointers with variables having register storage class. And since CPU registers are very limited in number, you should use register only with the variables which you need to use very frequently in your program. Because this would make your program 
faster. As registers have quite fast access when you compare it to RAM. Next, we discuss about static storage class. Static storage class, we would discuss about them when we talk about functions. So, static would be discussed with functions. Because to discuss static storage class, I need to tell you how they retain their value during the different function calls. And you would understand that only when you know the basic idea of what a function is, how to create a function and all that. Okay, then uh, the last one was external storage class. And we said that external variables can be used in multiple files. So let's create another file in the same project. So I create a new file, not a project. And it asks me, do you want to add this file in the active project? And yes, I want to. You need to save it with a name. So I just say file 2 and I save it. Okay, uh, I forgot to give an extension to it. Let's delete this file and add another file. I go to new, I'm empty file. And then I add file2.cpp. And then I save it. In this file, I... declare a variable int x and then in the main.cpp file I want to use that variable x. So I need to declare it through extern int x and then I can use my x I can print my x Let's give an initial value also, int x equals to 5. And now let's run it. When I run it, uh, okay, I need to provide input. I write 4 and 5 and I get 9 as my sum and the value of x 5. So I am able to use a variable which was declared in some other file without even hash including that file. Till now we discussed hash include a little bit where we said that if I want to access something which is an other file, I wanted to access some classes and objects which were declared in IO stream, I had to use hash include. But here I am able to use a variable defined in some other file without even hash including it just by using the extern keyword because x here is a global variable defined. So this is a global variable here and through by using the keyword extern I am declaring this variable in this file. 